Shalom. I'm Doug, and I'm here today with Charles Loader of HebrewTransliteration.app, and we want to encourage you in studying the biblical languages, especially Hebrew. Today I'm talking with Charles Loader. Charles, thanks for joining us on the program today. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. Would you like to tell our viewers and listeners uh, a little bit about yourself, your background, your interest in the biblical languages? Yeah, so most people probably know me as the person who's talking about transliteration a lot. Um, my background, I'll give you a short story, primarily went to undergraduate at Boyce College, which is the undergraduate arm of Southern Seminary. Uh, had a chance to work with a lot of wonderful teachers there. Um, was persuaded to continue to do an MA, which I did an MA at Rutgers University with Gary Reinsberg. Had a great opportunity there to just do a lot of work in Hebrew, Ugaritic, Aramaic, all the Semitic languages. Uh, to say that also that my Greek has greatly suffered over the years. <laughs> um, and uh, after that, I got a job in tech. I worked in an academic library for a while, which was a, a great opportunity, but just with um, personal financial reasons, decided to get into technology, and I am currently going to be starting a job as a senior front-end developer at a web development agency. Okay, very good. So you've kind of got a foot in both worlds, the the ancient languages and then modern computer languages and yeah. computer programming, right? Yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah, my favorite languages are Hebrew and JavaScript, which are the two commonly paired. <laughs> <laughs> Well, that's great. And I love uh, the tagline I saw on a social media account you have, making the internet a more Hebrew friendly place. Yeah. <laughs> Just trying uh, to be good, good marketing, right? That's what it's all yeah, about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We can definitely get on board with that, uh, that kind of line. So what's uh, prompted, you, you mentioned the Hebrew transliteration guy. That's kind of what you're known as. And I know I have shared your website, hebrewtransliteration.app, several times. I make heavy use of it. Uh, would you like to tell us a little bit about uh, that project, kind of how it came to be, and then we can talk about what it does? Yeah. Uh, when I was working in a library, I was also doing a lot of editorial work, uh, a lot of freelance editing, freelance indexing. And there's, of course, publishers still often require transliteration. Uh, sometimes they just don't want to typeset right to left text. Sometimes if you're working in a comparative semitics, uh, it's easier to put everything into one script, which makes comparisons a little more obvious. Uh, so I was doing a lot of that work. I was learning to code, and I had to create, come up with a project. And I said, well, this transliteration thing is really hard, because who knows how to put the dot underneath the H or who knows how to put the little V shape over the S. This is really complicated. Uh, so my first project was I wrote uh, a tool to do that. And that was the very first iteration of the site. It only did FBLs transliteration. Uh, while later I was able to add SBLs general transliteration to it as well. And just as I've grown as a developer, this project has always come alongside me as everything I learn, I tend to pour into this, into this website somehow. Uh, so that's how I got started doing that, and uh, like I said, I've just continued to maintain it ever since. I've had a few few little community that's grown up around it. Uh, you've obviously helped with some input into things and have helped me with uh, quite a few little challenges related to the accents from time to time. Um, yeah, and so I've just continued to maintain it ever since. Well, that's awesome. It's a great service uh, that you have there uh, for uh, the community, Charles, and we really appreciate it. Would you like to uh, just walk our, our viewers through this. If you're listening by audio, I encourage you to check out uh, the YouTube or the Spotify um, or Vimeo versions of this episode so you can, can see this. Uh, if you're uh, going to go to the website later, again, it's hebrewtransliteration.app. Yeah, so let me go ahead and bring this up here and see if I can bring up text real quick. Uh, you know, mention the community. What I find most interesting is it's actually not heavily used by uh, most Christians I've learned. Most of them tend to have a disdain for transliteration. So I've actually been able to do quite a bit of work with uh, Jewish communities uh, since they often find being able to have it in a script that's a bit more familiar to them if they're not familiar with the Hebrew script uh, to be a benefit to them. Right. Well, that's that's an interesting surprise. Yeah. 
I, I didn't know who my user base was going to be. So, so we'll take a look at it. So we're on safaria.org, wonderful website. Um, so if we go ahead in here, we're on the main page, which is just transliteration. So you can just drop it in here, copy, paste, and we'll set it to, this is go to, go to SBL Academic, and you can just transliterate it. Now, of course, if you want to go into these settings, there's a lot of different uh, types. So this is academic experimentation, general purpose, Brill. Uh, none of these are endorsed by any one in particular. This is just me understanding their own schema. Uh, Romanio, that's another uh, Jewish community. Um, so they actually use Greek script. This is fairly interesting. Oh, so, wow. Yeah, and they have a very particular reading tradition. But of course, if you ever want to, let's say you want SBL, you can always go ahead and you can customize it. Let's say, ah, you don't like the, you just like CH for head. That's all you really need. So we can just go ahead and so we'll see. Whereas, you know, so Ruach, instead of the H with the dot underneath it, you can just use the, the CH instead. So you can customize right. it, do whatever you want. That's neat. And you, and you can also have, don't you have like a more simplified version as well for, for people that mm -hmm. maybe can't even work with the diacriticals? Yeah, so the SBL's general purpose. So if you go into their handbook, uh, that's what this is using. So, right, so you can have that. The Ha'ar, it's, you know, the Ha'yatu, Ha'yata. Okay. Yeah, so that's a little simpler, a little easier yeah. to read. Yeah, that's great. Well, it is, you know, I have to admit, it is kind of painful after you learn to read the Hebrew um, <laughs> alphabet and, and get used to right to left to have to go back to this. But when mm -hmm. you do interdisciplinary work, uh, or like you say, you know, certain publishers have, have different standards and so forth, this is incredibly helpful. And I can't imagine going back through and doing all this by hand. So thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, finding all the little uh, characters on your keyboard or trying to have to Google search for them and remembering, you know, what is that little V over top of an S called? And anyway, <laughs> it's an S with a basic. Uh, right. I've learned that from just having to Google it 20 other times. Um, so this is the main module. And I'll go a little bit more into what I, why I say module here in a second. And of course, we have some other pages. So another ability is sometimes you just need to just remove all the accents. I know that's probably anathema to you, Doug, but <laughs> Ouch. some publishers also require, you know, you got to remove the accents. Um, yes. and this also has some other settings. So you can just, you know, if you want to get rid of everything, uh, you can even get rid of all the vowels too. Sometimes right. people want just the, just the, the block script, leaving we'll we'll all the punctuation. All right, so you get just a nice, clean, just the consonant. Sure, which is valuable if you're comparing a consonantal set to another consonantal mm -hmm. set, for sure. Yeah, and sometimes you, you know, you the case in point, you just might need to make, this is what the word looks like without any points. And here's a possibly another way it was pointed. Yeah. Sure. And then Excellent. the last module is uh, the one you've helped with the most, which is by far the most different that I've uh, encountered, had to work with. So this is allowing us to chunk the text, is I believe the term you use, correct? Yes. So right now your default is just after a soft pursuit and enough, uh, you'll have a, a new line. So this is kind of a weird thing. So this the slash N is how you create a new line. Um, here, let's see, maybe after two, we'll put, Done. It takes a little second, and there you go. And now you've chunked the text into, I don't know if these are the syntactical units you would want to chunk it into, but this is just what we did. Right. Yes, it's, you know, it's it's very close uh, to what uh, I would break it down into for sure. And, and still, it's, you know, right away, even with that setting, you've got some very helpful divisions to help people slow down and and read it uh in chunks so yeah very useful and i love how customizable it is yeah uh right now so i think it only works with the prose accents very well um and, and it's actually excuse me, all the disjunctive accents too so uh yes. that's a little it's not fully fully featured yet but we're getting there and of course you can also put this t if you wanted to put a tab so the tab mm -hmm. will space will come between these two uh, right. Maybe not the most useful, but I'm sure there's an application for it. <laughs> well, I, that particular verse, I have a dramatic pause there, so I'm like, ah, there you go. 
Hayatat tohu vavohu and so forth. <laughs> yeah, awesome. So there you go. That, that was a fun cool. collaboration. Thanks for yeah. That was that was very helpful. That was a great learning experience for me. Uh, just because uh, this is a again my forte is accents. I'm definitely more into morphology and grammar. Well, have there been any other you know through this experience just just any other surprises challenges um, you know with producing oh. this type of tool you want to share about? Yeah, there's been uh, about a billion challenges. So I'll start of I said, I called this a module before. Um, so this isn't just a website, actually. So, you know, you have, you have an input and you have an output. And what does that is something that we would call a JavaScript package. JavaScript is the language that it's written in. A package just means it's an encapsulated piece of code. It has an input, it gives you an output, and it doesn't affect anything in between. So that is all found here. This is open source, so this is GitHub, for those familiar with code. Um, this is the most common place people will host uh, their open source code. So this is all open source. You can download it, change it, do anything you want with it. There's zero restrictions. The only restriction, the only thing that's a part of the license is that you give credit, that you keep the license in the code. That's it. Right. Somebody could run this locally on their own computer and open it in a web browser, or they could publish it to a website. Yep, they can do anything they want with it. No yeah, restrictions. That's amazing. Yeah. yeah, so this is the module. Um, and here, I, I pulled up an example I've done before of, you know, you just don't have to have an input and output block. So this is all just placeholder text. Of course, none of this is real. Mm. Uh, but <laughs> let's say you have a text with Hebrew embedded in it and you want to allow your readers to actually transliterate it, well, instead of having them to go over here, put it in and output it, you know, you can just have them click a button and in line, give them a transliteration. Yeah. So the, the logic that does the transliteration can be used really anywhere you build a website. There's really, yeah, the possibilities are endless. That's amazing. Very so, helpful service. Yeah. So as far as challenges, yeah, there's been a, a quite quite a few challenges. Uh, one of it involved building an entirely other module <laughs> to syllabify the text. Uh, what I've learned is syllabifying text without having lexical information is uh, complicated to say the least. So you can see I'm pretty actively working on this one. I just updated it four days ago, uh, 700 plus commits. So it, it's had a lot of work and this one, uh, so Havarot is uh, modern Hebrew for syllables. The JS is the JavaScript. Um, I won't get too deep into the weeds of this, but basically it allows you to take a word and break it up into syllables and have information about that syllable. Is it closed? Is it accented? Um, how many characters does it have? Does it have a, a mater in it? So it just allows you to input a text and get that sort of helpful information that feeds wow. into the transliteration. So that, that was definitely one of the biggest hurdles is learning how to programmatically syllabify text. Right. You know, I can definitely see here that there's a lot that goes on under the hood. And you've developed a very nice, clean, what do you call Hebrew transliteration.app? Do you call it a, um, a, an, a web app or yeah, a program? Yeah, you can call it a web app. You can call it a website program. It's all, it, that's all the yeah. same. But the, the thing that really powers it is right. this, which is the module. And right. this module exposes a few different functions. Um, so transliteration, which you saw removing the characters which you saw and one that i used to expose to users but i don't anymore is called sequence so not all hebrew characters are sequenced the same way you usually have to start with the consonant but after that you could put a vowel then you could put a dagash then you could put an accent or you could put the consonant the accent the vowel the dagash that would be a crazy way to do it but not all text is sequenced the same even though to our eyes it looks the same to the computers there are completely different texts. So the sequencing module is used under the hood. I expose it in this um, in the module, but I don't expose it on the website since most people just don't find a huge use for it. Um, right. But yeah, that just allows you then to ensure that all your text is always done the same way of 
consonant, ligature, dagesh, vowel, accent. So it's always, always sequenced in that manner. Okay. One of my Hebrew experiences uh, was through a, a program that required us to type our answers in, and it was computer graded. And I remember it always requiring a particular sequence in that way, or it would be kind uh, of wrong. So. Oh, that's wrong. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> some some developer did not sanitize his inputs, and that's a big no no. Big no no. Maybe they can improve that in the future. Yeah. Well, that's a great walkthrough there, Charles. Thanks for, for sharing that yeah. with us. And I'll show you the last thing I was working on. I brought up this tab. So I've been working on this one for over a year now, uh, implementing Jeffrey Kahn's Tiberian uh, transcription. It's it's still going to take a little while more to get it done. But after 145 comments, uh, we've gotten quite down. And, and right now, my, my biggest holdup is the poetic accents. Oh, so, okay. Ran to a big bug there. So I'll probably have to rope you into that. <laughs> okay. I hope I could be of some help there. Thank you for that overview. And I hope folks will appreciate, you know, what goes into uh, what I, I think is a very uh, clean, simple, uh, user-friendly interface. That, that so, makes my developer ha my heart happy. That's, someone can use it and it's simple. That's the best feeling. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Well, again, we really appreciate your, your service with this. Any other uh, thoughts about things that you might like to expand uh, on with it in the future or horizons for, for other folks that you would say, you know, maybe you're in, you're in tech and you want to help people with biblical studies, you know, here are some things you could think about. Yeah, there's, there's a lot of work that can be done and that there is to do. Obviously, um, a lot of work is being done on the vanguard of AI. Um, that's a, a lot of really smart people are tackling that issue, especially having how to do translation using AI. Um, so if you want to get into AI, yeah, there's a lot to do there. Um, there's building data sets, which is always really important. Um, the Hebrew Bible one has been pretty, we have some pretty good data sets on that now, um, but there's always more work that could be done. And, you know, especially in biblical studies, a lot with the church fathers, that's such a huge corpus that people are still working on. Uh, again, the Greek New Testament and Hebrew Bible have been pretty well, well codified, but there's still, still some more that could be done. Um, and building tools like this, again, it's open source. If you want to contribute to this tool, I'm always happy to have people um, make contributions. If you're not in tech, just giving people feedback is really, really helpful. Like. If you're using Logos and something doesn't make sense, let them know. Um, <laughs> I, I don't work for Logos, so so maybe maybe their PR team doesn't appreciate that. Uh, but I guarantee you, the developers do. They appreciate when something isn't working. Someone can tell them that it's not working. Be nice, of course. Be nice, but <laughs> sure, <laughs> feedback is helpful for us. Most of us right. are just sitting at our computers typing away, not really knowing if anyone is using any of our product. So we appreciate it when people give us feedback. Excellent. Any closing thoughts or comments today? Oh, so many, but um, I just appreciate it. And I was just glad someone's using the tool. Uh, I really do hope uh, people can get some use out of it. And especially the structure tool, that one's been uh, really fun to use. I've tried to use it in some of my reading I'm currently. Uh, not focused on reading any Hebrew right now, but when I when I was doing a little bit more, uh, it was helpful to be able to just take a verse at a time and just look at it and just focus on three or four words at a time and get the sense of those instead of kind of getting overwhelmed and just looking at yes. one word at a time. And, yes. you know, by the fifth word, I have no idea what I said on the first word. So <laughs> it's been a, so it's been a, it's been a helpful tool for me. Excellent. All I remember is uh, you know. Uh, student in the earlier stages of, of studying Hebrew and seeing so much of the block text and just being just completely overwhelmed. And so yeah. I'm, I'm really glad that this is helpful. Yeah. Well, Charles, thanks again for coming on the program today and sharing about your work. And uh, we, uh, we look forward to continuing to use that and uh, seeing where else it goes from here and, and seeing, you know, what kind of other projects that it inspires from, for others as well. I appreciate it, Doug. It's been an honor. Thank you. Oh, <laughs>